Why do health reform if the economy is in such bad shape? Why don't you pick on something easier? Why take that on? That's the biggest single misread of health reform in the U.S. today. Health reform is not an end in itself. It's a means to an end. And the employers in this room can probably appreciate it, though with all due respect, all of us are complicit in getting us to the problem that we have in health care. Uh, in the spring of 2009, uh, I get a call from some folks in the White House. I'm fiercely independent. I am a data guy. And they say, what we really need is to figure out a way to reduce by $2 trillion over a decade what we spend in health care while not compromising safety and quality. Uh, we just had a photo op on Monday with the heads of the Health Plan Association, AMA, AHA, AdvaMed, Bio, and Pharma, the six big trade groups, noticeably absent, U.S. Chamber of Commerce or Business Roundtable or Conference Board representing business. And the president now is going to take a trip to the Middle East, his first as president, and that's in five weeks. Uh, we'd like to have an answer from this group about where we can reduce the cost of health care while not compromising safety and quality. Now, I'll tell you where we are. In May of 2009 and January of 2014, we still have the same relative positioning of each of those groups relative to the other. Healthcare is a kind of interesting industry. Uh, all of you know this, it's 17% of the GDP, it's 21% of the federal budget, averages 20 to 4% of a state's budget, 17% of discretionary spending of the average household, second only to housing. Let that sink in. What people miss is insurance premiums and out-of-pocket costs for health care have exceeded wage growth by a factor of four to one over the past five years. Four to one. Insurance premium increases through employers or directly pass through to the individual. So we're an odd industry in that when the economy is doing badly, health care does well. Go figure. Mike, you understand that? And when the economy is roaring, health care does better. Um, I do this weekly report. I was studying the year-end financial results for the industry. Business folks, you'll appreciate this. The S&P is up 29.2% last year. If you take all the sectors of healthcare and blend them into an index, it's up 43%. Biopharma up 57%. The six investor-owned health insurance plans up 47%. We're an industry that can figure out a way to make the market work for us. And what I saw at the table in May of 2009, what still happens is that every sector of the system figures out a way to protect its interest and point at every other sector of the industry and say, you're the problem. I'm okay. You're not okay. And so what we've gotten is to a point where each sector is fiercely defensive of its own 
and fiercely antagonistic toward the other, and I bet we've got a few physicians in here. Uh, there are 110 different disciplines of medicine that are lobbying their piece of health reform. There's no such thing as, quote, the voice of medicine. Every body part has its own voice in this discussion of how healthcare should be managed. But to begin this reform journey, uh, we've got to be fairly honest about it. Uh, what we have in the U.S. system is not sustainable, period. Unless, and some would think this a good outcome, unless we think we should continue on its current trajectory where in 2025, 70% of the population will be insured by a government plan. Today, that's 31%. Medicare, Medicaid, military health. 31%. 70% by 2025. And the 30% that are not covered through the government either have no coverage or they're buying in a private concierge market. That's where we're going. That's the current longitudinal trend line.